Welcome to the Church Solutions Podcast, brought to you by JSL Solutions. The Church Solutions Podcast is designed to help equip you and your church in the use of technology and other tools and services. And now, here are your hosts, Steve Lacey and Phil Thompson. And welcome to another edition of the Church Solutions Podcast. My name is Phil Thompson. And I'm Steve Lacey. And uh, Steve and I do this podcast every week. We work with a tech company called JSL Solutions, which covers uh, streaming video, what mobile else? apps, mobile apps, church yeah. management. Yeah, all right, good. And we help churches. We help churches, and and we like to do the spot. We we you know, in case you're first or new to us, whatever. We we normally talk about tech related things, although sometimes because we're both involved in ministry and have been for decades and decades and decades, uh, we're we're called dinosaurs. Uh, we. Uh, we like to talk about things that will help volunteers, help senior pastors, help uh, you know key people in ministry. So we, we like to talk about different things. But today, what are we going to talk about, Steve? We have a special guest. We have a special an expert. guest. expert. He's an expert. He's the author of uh, the book, The Serving Church. The po- Actually, it's called Podcasting Church. That's the second book. Uh, Tweeting Church. He's also uh, a professional videography, and he's been doing tech stuff since 2000. So he's just a spring chicken. Uh, he's uh, uh, also done editing with Final Cut Pro for over 10 years. And so if you're listening, uh, different people out there, you need some help with this. This uh, this guy may be your man, probably is. His specialties are videography, new media, social media, church technology, and presentation support. And he has been helping churches uh, leverage, as he says, the power of the 21st century media to spread the uh, first century message. And so he does lots of things like writes articles, uh, does training, uh, books on the subject and stuff. His name is Paul Allen Clifford. Paul, how are you today? I'm doing wonderfully, Phil. Um, well, just glad to talk to you guys today. Well, we're glad you're here. We sure appreciate you spending a little bit of time with us. Uh, that's a great thing. And so uh, Paul has a website called trinitydigitalmedia.com. Uh, what is that all about, Paul? Yeah, so I spent a lot of my life before I got into church tech thinking that I was just odd, that I liked tech, and I really loved the local church, loved Christ. Uh, just uh, my Christian faith is hugely central to who I am. So I didn't think that those two things could go together until I took a class in seminary. Uh, called Technology and Ministry. And after that, I started noticing just all the churches that kind of wanted to use technology or had problems that technology could solve, and they were just kind of fumbling around in the dark. And for some reason, God's made me in such a way that this all comes easily to me. So I thought, well, let me see if I can help. And that was kind of the genesis of the idea for Trinity Digital Media. That's great. So we encourage folks to check that out, check the website out. So so today we're going to specifically talk about something that I don't think we've ever really talked about on our podcast before, and, and that would involve uh, uh, present presentation, I guess you'd call it what, presentation software? Presentation software, yeah. yeah. And, and so when we're talking about presentation software, we're talking about, uh, you know, if you go to a church, it you know, you're, you go in and they have uh, images on a projector or maybe multiple projectors in the front. You s- the band plays, lyrics get yeah. up on the screen. Lyrics, sermons that are uh, scripture underneath the pastor speaking or that sort of thing. Yeah, uh, videos maybe. Uh, lots of things here. So there's lots of different presentation software out there. Uh, what's out there? Uh, Media Shout, I think, is one of them, right? That's what your church uses, yes. right, Steve? Uh, my church does use Pro Presenter, and there's some other ones out there as well. So, Easy Worship. What are the top presentation uh, software programs out there? Paul, do you know what are they? Besides, I know we're going to yeah. talk about Pro Presenter, but but what about the other ones? Yeah. So you mentioned Media Shout, uh, Easy Worship, Pro Presenter, of course. Probably the other one that I'd uh, mention is Proclaim, which right. is uh, released by the same people that do Logos Bible software. Okay. All so, right. 
Okay. All right. So we're going to talk about ProPresenter. So what? So just give us a little definition. What What is ProPresenter? And ProPresenter has had different uh, different ones come out there. I think my church at one point had ProPresenter 5. We now have ProPresenter 6. Can you give us just a brief definition of what it is? Yeah. So imagine that you have software that was made by someone who um, – who works in a local church, and he also happens to be a programmer. And so it's tailored specifically to the needs of churches. Uh, this is basically back 10 years or so ago, um, there was a guy that uh, was a volunteer in his local church and a programmer, and he created ProPresenter for um a special event, and everyone liked it. Unfortunately, it was made specifically for just that event. So if they wanted to change songs, they had to go into the code and change everything, and it it just was a mess because it was just for that event. Um, so since everyone liked it, he started working on it to make it better, and that became ProPresenter 2, which was the first one that they sold. Then ProPresenter 3 really started gaining... Uh, a, let me mute this here. Um, ProPresenter 3 really started to gain adoption. And then... Um, What's the time frame on this? When um, was this? It was probably... Let's see here. I've been using ProPresenter 3 for... Let's see. It's 2017 probably six or seven years myself. And uh, I've never worked for Renewed Vision, the company that makes it, but I'm just, I'm a huge fan. And that's what started all this is me deciding, well, I need to make some training videos for my church. And then it became, well, I'll just throw those up on YouTube and the rest is history. Uh, so did it, um, did it start out on the Mac? Yeah. Yeah, okay. absolutely. The, so, I think I met the guy. <laughs> the more you meet, the more you talk about this, we had a yep. booth at a at a conference at NAB, and uh, I'm pretty sure it was Pro Presenter right next door. It was they were just getting going, um, and it was I remember it was Mac only at the time. So, yep, it, yeah. they've since uh, released a Windows version, mm -hmm. starting with Pro Presenter Five. There was a Windows version and a Mac version. So uh, that was something uh, that was pretty cool. Uh, I think Proclaim also has versions for both platforms, but I think those two are the only ones. Easy Worship announced one that never shipped, and I don't think Media Shout has both of them. Uh, there are some free and open source products as well that are perhaps not as... Um, robust as the paid products because you know they're acts of love not stuff that you have a group of developers working on every single day so so what what makes pro presenter uh in your opinion i mean what makes that what makes it better a better presentation software than like something like powerpoint <laughs> yeah so uh i was actually uh it was a bit of a uh, conversion process for me because for a while I was really recommending to my church that we stick to PowerPoint because, and this is something that I've heard over and over again, I figured everyone knows PowerPoint. So why would we go to the trouble of training volunteers on using new software when they already know PowerPoint? But then I started playing with the different uh, worship software packages, and I found out there's a very good reason. PowerPoint, uh, uh, you can actually tell that PowerPoint was made for uh, business use. When you watch a Bill Gates presentation, you can tell it's PowerPoint. Um, and that's fine. You run into a problem in churches, though, with a more nonlinear style. Now, I, 
I'm not going to make any judgment as to whether it's the Holy Spirit telling the worship leader to skip verse two or <laughs> they just got. Now be doesn't, careful. I used to lead music, so be careful here. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter which it is, right? It, because when you're the person running the lyrics, right? <laughs> if you don't know, you just need to have a way to jump to verse three. Right. Yep. So it uh, doesn't matter whether it was the Holy Spirit or you forgot. It, it, yeah. Usually result, with me, I say, forgot. That's usually what I was, <laughs> my, my, but I would blame it on the Holy Spirit. But yeah. go ahead, Paul. I'm sorry. And I'm in the guy in the back panicking. He's like, he's not doing that verse. What verse is he on? Let me find out. Yep. Yeah. That's, that's really the, um, the problem that we see is that um, people just, have this issue where they um, they don't know what's going on. You know, they've skipped a verse or forgotten it. Doesn't matter. And worship software is uniquely tailored for that situation. It's also tailored for we're having communion and it runs longer than we anticipated. So the band decides to sing a totally different song. <laughs> you know, with PowerPoint, uh, we had a database of PowerPoint files and we'd, you know, import the appropriate songs before church started. But what happens when it's up on screen right now and you hear the opening uh, riff or the the opening music to a totally different song that you haven't planned for? With PowerPoint, it's going to be maybe halfway through the song before you get it up. Whereas with ProPresenter, Easy Worship, Media Shout, any of those, you can usually type in the title of the song. It'll bring it right up. You can click on it, and maybe you'll miss the first uh, line or two or three. But depending on how quickly you type and how much is at the beginning of the song, if you recognize it in the first couple of notes, you can usually get that up very, very quickly. So that's one advantage. Another advantage is Bible integration. Uh, all these pieces of software have that. And uh, I think where ProPresenter shines is it has some additional features that make it great for higher end production. So if all your video is coming from your worship software, that's one thing. But when you add iMag, you know, image magnification showing the live video on the screen, mm -hmm. um, then the question is, well, how do I get live video on the screen and worship lyrics up there along with scripture verses, the ability to switch to a pre-recorded video, all those things. And ProPresenter adds um, a module that can interface with a video switcher really well, and that's the Alpha Key module. So it allows you to do some uh, live keying with Alpha channels, which provide not only transparency, but uh, different levels of opacity. So you can have um, a background that slowly fades into um, the lyric, as opposed to, well, it's either solid and there or it's not uh, with a chroma key kind of situation or with um, a luma key. So I think that's the power of So going back to something you mentioned right in the beginning, I was thinking about this some more. You said that um, the, the person that developed this developed it for his church. Was Does that mean that this was the first um, church Based presentation software, or were he just, or were the others out there that uh, he just wanted to build his own? Yeah, so Media Shout and Easy Worship, I know predate uh, oh, Prokers. Okay. Um, but this is just my opinion, what I'm going to say. I, I don't mean this to be fact. I just mean this to be as I was searching for which one my church should use. And we used two or three before we got to ProPresenter. So I'm not speaking from inexperience here. It felt like the others that we tried um, were written by people that were Christian programmers 
that wanted to help out, but um, they didn't actually do it. You know, th- this wasn't their role during the weekend service. This was, oh, I see you guys have trouble. Here, let me give you what will help. And it it's not as intuitive in my mind. It, it doesn't solve all the problems that you have when you're there uh, running it weekend and week in and week out. Someone skips a verse or the kids ministry runs in with a number of a child that's having a meltdown and needs mommy or daddy. Um, you need to send a message to the pastor saying, hey, we've got a technical problem. Try and stretch this last point another <laughs> minute. You know, things like that, that uh, doing those as easily as possible, you really need to have some sort of experience doing it where having all those ideas is in there. It's uh, something that a lot of these uh, worship software packages do. I just like the way ProPresenter does it and the little, little um, subtle differences in how they do it that I think makes it easier for volunteers and makes it easier for the live production environment. So that last thing you mentioned, get the message to the pastor to stretch it out another minute, that sounds like some magic. Is there something, is there a solution there? Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, So with ProPresenter and some of the others have this as well, there is something called a stage display or a a feedback monitor, or it's basically a specialized display or projection for the people on the stage. Okay. So when you're singing, you don't need a background. You just need to know what, what the next lyric is, not the one that's up there. You're already singing the one that's up there. What if you forget to go into the bridge? You know, so having the next lyric that's not needed for the congregation just yet, but might jog your memory, very helpful. Being able to send a message with that um, screen to the worship leader or the person that's doing announcements, you know, sometimes just a bullet point of, hey, the men's retreat is coming up. The ladies are having this clothing swap event. And don't forget about the children and teens are having their uh, camps this summer. And parents need to plan for those. I, w- I so, so wish they would have had that 10, 15 years ago when I used to do music. <laughs> it yeah. Kept me from and uh, it, it gets even better. Uh, Phil, being a musician, you might have heard of... Um, some of the software uh, Ableton that uh, handles some background loops and things like that. Well, you can integrate that with ProPresenter. So you could even, if you were using Ableton live during service and you decide midway through with a MIDI pedal, if you're operating guitar or if you're playing on a keyboard, maybe you hit something on a computer and you decide to skip, like it's a decision, it's not a mistake, you decide to skip, you can integrate that with ProPresenter and the lyrics automatically skip with you. And they're all timed and beautiful. Wow. So yeah, it it's really amazing some of the things you can do. You can also uh, interface with uh, lighting consoles. So when the lights change, the lyrics change, uh, the background, video matches there's really a lot you can do nowadays is there uh are there certain lighting packages that that are integrate with it or is there how, how does that yeah so if your uh, lighting console or lighting software nowadays can handle uh, interface via midi then you can do it also uh, rs422 um is something that a uh, pro presenter can handle. Those are all additional modules, but if you're at the point where you're trying to take it up a notch, you have all the basics covered and you just really like to 
have a firmer integration between the different roles. Sometimes it's uh, really nice to have those integrate. And for uh, portable churches that maybe they've got the gear, but they don't necessarily have the personnel, sometimes it's really nice to be able to have those uh, work together. Yeah, absolutely. So we're, we're, the clock is ticking here, but I, I wanted to come at this from a kind of a practical standpoint. So I'm a, maybe I'm an associate pastor listening or a key volunteer for my church. And, and we're saying, yep, I've been thinking about upgrading now for a long time. Uh, Pro presenter sounds pretty good. What, what are some steps to getting Pro presenter? I mean, I know you go online, you can buy it and all that, but what, what do I need as far as hardware? What kind of a computer? Uh, you're a big windows fan, right? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Right. You, uh, well, you and Steve have a lot in common. You hate Windows, and and rightly so. But but let's talk for a moment here. I'm getting off track. Sorry. Uh, what should you get? What kind of computer should you get? The Handle Pro Presenter. Well, uh, I'll tell you what you shouldn't get. A lot of times, uh, churches rely on a donated computer. You know, uh, so maybe now it would be a Windows XP box that has really outlived its useful life. Um, yeah, that that's not a good choice for something that virtually everyone in your church is going to see the output of. You want something more reliable, newer, uh, with newer hardware. So really you're looking at probably an i5 or i7 whether it's Windows or a Mac, it's going to be one of those type of machines. You're not going to look for uh, an Intel Core 2 Duo. Uh, that was fine in 2010, maybe into 2012, but we're in 2017 now. So it's it's really time to move on to a more modern architecture. Um, so, so robust. Go robust. I mean, even if, even if it's maybe a little more than maybe. Yeah, it's a good about. point that you make that everyone is going to see the output of this. That's you think about that and you go, okay, let's, let's not take this. Let's not go cheap on this one. Cause our, yeah, you know, our, that's a good point. Paul. Yeah. All right. So yeah. go ahead. I, uh, think about it. Probably if you were going to hire someone for the positions that you've got volunteers for, you're looking at probably bare minimum for an eight hour day, a hundred dollars. Let's just say, now, we've got 52 weeks in a year, so that's 52 weekends because there is prep, prep work done, practices, etc. So let's say that you were just going to hire someone for eight hours a week for 52 weeks a year. So that's $5,200. Instead, I've got a deal for you. Why don't you spend $1,000 on a really good computer? and that replaces the $5,200 that you were going to spend on a person because you've got a volunteer that can run it and you're giving them the gift of not having to have 12 hours of frustration every week trying to make it work, even though it doesn't really do the job. So I think that that's important to note. I also think it's important to note that when you buy hardware, you're not buying it for today. If you were buying hardware for today, you would replace it next week. But that's not your plan. Your plan is to buy hardware and keep it for three years, five years, maybe even 10 years. So if you're going to do that, every dollar more that you spend gives you a much longer return on investment. So if you buy something that was state of the art in 2010, in 2017, it's going to be frustrating in 2018 and really annoying in 2019 and probably won't work at all in 2020. Whereas if you buy something high end today, then in 2020, it's still going to be middle of the road. And in 2022, you might start to look at replacing it. And that's great as opposed to replacing something that, for a couple hundred dollars extra, you could have stretched it a couple more years. So that's kind of the thinking I think uh, churches should have. Good stewardship is not spending the least possible money. 
good stewardship is spending the right money and getting the best value so that you don't have to spend that money again and again and again because you should have just paid a little bit more the first time. Does um does ProPresenter provide a, a free trial at all? Oh yeah, absolutely. So you can get an unlock code that makes it uh, work for you, no problem for, I, I can't remember if it's two weeks or a month, but what I would recommend you do is if you're planning on using it and you've got hardware that can run it, download it right now because the version you can download on their website works perfectly in every way except it has a big watermark, has the Renewed Vision logo up on the screen. Well, practice it, get to know it, see if it's right for you before you try it out in your actual service so that you know what to do when uh, the worship leader uh, skips lyrics or when you need to send a message to the pastor, etc. You know what to do. You're not coming in cold and they're going, well, I heard this great new software can do all that stuff. And you've only had it for an hour. That's not the best way to do it. It's better to get to know it first and then go from there. And there are plenty of training videos and courses. I've got some free courses that I could send you to as well that would uh, help you get familiar with the basics of ProPresenter and then get your free trial, see if it works for you. And if so, then by all means, buy it. And I think that you'll be happy with the results. Uh, it's something that churches that can spend more money on other software and other gear choose to go with ProPresenter because it's kind of the best of all worlds. It's great for live production and it's great for churches. So Willow Creek, for example, would use ProPresenter even though they could buy the stuff that WGN in Chicago uses. Mm -hmm. so. yeah, that's good stuff. Paul, we're out of time. I, we, we need to have you back on again because uh, you really do have a lot of uh, knowledge when it comes to not just pro presenter stuff, but, but other things as well. So people can get a hold of you by what? Going to your website? Yeah, that's a great way to do it. Uh, go to trinitydigitalmedia.com. Uh, that, um, that's a great resource for all the stuff that I do every time I upload a new video to YouTube, which I've got over a thousand of them on YouTube. They're not all public anymore because some are out of date, but uh, probably 800 training videos that are available there. And um, and you talk about other things. I mean, it's not just pro presenter, right? I mean, the streaming right. video and uh, podcasting right. and all that, right? Yeah, my first book, uh, Podcasting Church, was all about podcasting. I've been podcasting since 2005. Um, then I wrote a book on Twitter. I've got 25,000 Twitter followers. Uh, so that's something I know a little bit about. Uh, just the heart of service in a church is my book, Serving Church. And I've got one coming out. Um, I don't know when you guys are going to release this episode, but uh, there's one that's uh, going to press with Church Mag Press uh, very soon, and that will be the uh, live streaming church book where I'm going to talk all about live streaming, uh, which is one of the big things, uh, especially with companies that aim towards live streaming for churches versus every church that wants to save money. And so they go with YouTube or Facebook Live. There's a time and place for those, but there are also gotchas because for YouTube and Facebook Live, for example, live streaming is an additional service that they've tacked on what they already do. It's not their main thing. So churches are kind of not really well suited for what they had in mind mm -hmm. for them. But, you know, yeah. churches try and make it work and they run into problems. Yeah, well, you know, we, we, we need to pick your brain on that. Obviously, we're a company that one of our main deals is streamingchurch.tv. We do streaming. 
four churches. And we'll need to get with you on that. And okay. Cover some more of that. All right, good. So we're out of time. This has been awesome. I really appreciate you. This is we've been speaking with Paul Allen Clifford, and you can check out his website, digital. I'm sorry, TrinityDigitalMedia.com. And if you want to give us some feedback, you can send us an email support at streamingchurch.tv. We're up against the clock here, so we're going to get out of here. The guy across the table is Steve Lacey. I'm Phil Thompson. We've been talking with Paul Allen Clifford, and we'll catch you next time on another edition of the Church Solutions Podcast. Take care. <laughs>